Inside your spotlight this morning, I have the founder of the Day Men Project, Mr. Garth Bozan, joining us in studio yet again. Happy International Men's Day, Garth. Same to you, sir. How are you doing this morning? I'm, I'm well. I'm, I think I'm very excited because of, one, the awareness around this day. Um, I think it's celebrated in like 80 countries around the world, so mm -hmm. it's good that we're here. I'm paying attention. Well, we started it here. Oh, well, yeah. Tiluxing, Dr. I was about Tiluxing. to. I was about to say that. Beside my dad, I have to give um, Dr. Jerome Tiluxing his flowers. Yeah. Um, mainly because of him championing this idea for such a long time, and to continue to do so. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Um, tell me how the DMN project has been going so far when it comes to supporting men uh, who need that safe space. It's been really good to see not just the progression of the project itself, because the project is just to raise awareness as well, mm -hmm. but it's good to see the open-mindedness of people now, um, especially in spaces where you may not think, because the idea behind that, just as uh, Dr. Tilok Singh's idea would have been, is to create a space, safe space for young men and men. So we see more of those conversations happening, and you know with more conversations, there's a little bit more awareness. Mm -hmm. so, Most yeah. definitely. What are some of the conversations happening uh, that you think men in society are generally concerned about? Well, you look at the connection between stuff from depression, suicide, uh, recent events like bullying in schools mm -hmm. for young men. Um, and then you also look at how is this tied into crime, right? So we, we want to bring more awareness to it because uh, there was something that he said in an interview a long time ago where they say they want computers in the school. And he said they should have more counselors in the school. Mm. And that, that hit me because I remember we had guidance counselors in school. I can't tell you how long that was. but. Yeah. I got a in school, and you see the importance of somebody to talk to. Uh, for young men going through different things, if there's no space to talk to them, there's also hopelessness, mm -hmm. which leads to suicide and like depression and stuff like that. So I think it's key that we create a safe environment mm -hmm. for the young men for the, uh, in schools and also yeah. men at work. How important is it for the type of, of um, conversations that we're having? Because it's one thing to have somebody to talk to, but what that person is feeding you. Because as a young man, I can say, well, I didn't have a guidance counselor in school, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we had certain teachers that you could go to, right. male teachers specifically, who could who could give you, you know, counsel you through whatever it is you're going through. Even though they weren't guidance counselors, they were mm -hmm. just adults, men, who would have probably gone through what you went through or, you know, had a good head on their shoulders to give you that advice, right? Yeah. Uh, but how important is it for you to find the right person or the right people to give you that advice? Well, you mentioned something that we don't have any more of, mentors. Mm. So if you look at different communities, there are no more mentors in the community anymore, right? And then the ones that the young men are following are the ones that are leading into things like crime. Yeah. So that's a good point, and it's something that we, we have to talk more about. Like, where are our mentors? Where do they come from? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a guidance counselor. It doesn't have to be a therapist. I have friends that are therapists, but I mean, I talk to them. Yeah. But it might be somebody that aligns or is relatable to me that I might feel comfortable. Uh, and then we come back into the topic of how comfortable are you to talk, but not just that. How comfortable are you to receive the talk? Because mm. you have to also receive the message. And so how comfortable are you to say, hey, let me take time to listen to you, not just to respond, but to understand and to comprehend exactly what it is you're going through. As men, we, we tend to, I mean, adult men tend to have those conversations or close enough conversations uh, in places like the barbershop, in places like the rum shop, when, you know, we feel, I want to say, safer. Mm -hmm. to be able to express what you're really feeling in most cases. I mean, in, in some cases, in the barbershop is bravado and it's showing off. But yeah. there are moments um, that I can safely say I've encountered moments where, you know, a man come and bear his soul and gets feedback from the community, mm -hmm. be, it, be it in Hiram shop, be it in the barbershop. Uh, is, that, is that healthy? Is that safe? Well, you know, we, we can't really think about healthy. I think it's safe because, you know, we talk about vulnerability in men. Right. Most men will not even talk about how they feel about stuff, right? So you have football. I play football. So if I go football, after football, you'll talk. Yeah. At the barbershop, you'll talk. You know, if you get any beard lined up, you'll talk. <laughs> However, what we have to encourage is men in solidarity with men. Right. So we cannot continue to give men the types of advice that we've been giving men culturally for a long time in terms of what a man should or should not be. There's a narrow-minded way of thinking of what masculinity looks like mm -hmm. in general, not just culturally here, but in general. Yeah. So it's a way of trying to educate men more on, hey, if somebody comes to you about something and the ego is present, how do we dismantle the ego and really get behind that and see what the problem is? Because that person could laugh and joke with you here and then leave and then commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a matter of awareness on both ends. And in terms of, um, so that's, that's awareness of yourself in terms of, you know, fear, feeling depression, you're feeling suicidal. But what about those who feel angry? 
uh, who don't know how to channel their anger properly? How, what sort of advice or where should they be going to get advice? Yeah. So one of the things to the Demon Project is just to raise awareness, right? We talk about awareness. We talk about resources when we talk about awareness. So this is one of the things that the media, I think, has to play a huge part in too, as well as the government and different corporations. Like, how do we share the resources for people to get therapy? A lot of people think therapy, they think money. Mm -hmm. They think privilege, right? Mm -hmm. But therapy is also in some of these hospitals, if you get recommended, you could get therapy sessions, you could go to somebody and talk to them, that's one. Mm -hmm. We also have to think about the environments that the men come from and how are they able to talk to them in those environments, right? So we create an environment for Caribbean men and themselves, we tap bridge between them, yeah. but also people who support them, like the women in their lives, the kids, family members, friends, co-workers. Does that support always have to look like talking though? Because, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I ask only because like sometimes I feel like if I go, like you say, play football, right? Mm -hmm. You go in here, you take a good sweat and you might get out whatever that feeling, that frustration, that anger, that whatever had you upset might be gone because maybe just simply the dopamine rush yeah. as the case may be. Um, again, I, I have to ask, is it healthy? Is it safe? Uh, is it enough? Well, at that point in time, it comes just like having these therapeutic journaling. Mm -hmm. So I write, I right. journal all the time. And that used to help me to get out of this. So besides football or going and take a lime, mm -hmm. I would be able to write stuff down. So there are different ways. I don't want it to feel as though it's so cookie cutter to everybody because everybody will be different well, and go through course. different things. Yeah. Um, but you have journaling. Uh, you do have where people just need to take a walk. You know. <laughs> and then a lot of this is simple. This is why the connection between mental health and physical health is so important. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you may not even want to talk about it. You may just want to remove yourself from one environment and go to another environment. But when you go back to that environment, the situation doesn't change. Yeah, but you have a little more clarity. Okay. You have to understand a lot of conversation you have having with other people is good, but you also have to have a conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a level of accountability as a man. If you want to consider yourself to be a man, because a man, in my my humble perspective, is a man who deals with social initiatives, right? If there's an issue, right. that man will deal with that. But it also is a conversation with yourself and that level of accountability that you, as a person, will take upon yourself. Do you think we have enough of that? Yeah, I think of we can better. accountability. I think we, we, I think we're in a better space. You know, I, I don't want to come in and make it seem as though we have all these issues and we don't have any solutions. I mm -hmm. think we are in a better space now. Even these conversations that we have now, yeah. even celebrating the day itself and the, the whole day that we have planned today, that is a key indication that we're looking to move forward and not go back. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. I take that point. Uh, in terms of the support systems for men, uh, you mentioned you know women supporting men, uh, the families supporting men. Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to see an increase in that? Do we need uh, more help from women? Uh, how do we approach the supporting aspect of it to say, um, community, come on board? Yeah, well, there's, there's this um, saying or book, whatever, men are from, what is Mars, it? Men are from Mars, women, women are from, from Venus. Venus. Yeah. Um, that's the mindset we're trying to get out of. There's, mm. no, there's no like, oh, there's so much confusion of what a man is. What a, no, I think a lot of it has been pinned by society where it's men versus women, mm -hmm. when it should be men working with women and likewise, right? Um, we have to understand, like I, I heard some earlier about gender equality, and that's a key point. Right. If it's gender equality, we have to be able to create the same safe space that we want to create for women, especially in work or at home. So I feel like the support system has to be the people that love them. It doesn't matter what gender. Right. But the argument is still is that there's still such a, a patriarchy. Yeah. So then how do we create that equality if, we still, if there's still such an uh, overwhelming feeling of the patriarchal society? We had to teach our men how to communicate effectively. Um, we've been brought up how to conceal and not to communicate. Mm -hmm. So once, I think once we teach that and we understand that a little bit more and we share more of these conversations, more women will understand what it looks like. A lot of times you can't identify something if you can't identify something. You don't know what you don't know. So you don't know. All right. So how do we get people to know more besides the, besides this conversation? Where, yeah. where would you suggest people uh, start looking to open up their minds to, to this perspective? There are so many more men's groups now. I'm really happy to see that. Um, I do always just push my projects, stuff mm -hmm. like online stuff. I push other people's projects. There are so many projects now that cater to men. And what you have to understand, because men are so different and so individual that some men might gravitate towards some more than others. Yeah. Um, I would, I mean, with social media, you could find them on there. There's a lot of men's group on there. There's a lot of stuff. Now, now. There's a lot, now, a lot of now. social media. <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference between the hyper masculinity type right. of thing and the alpha male type of thing, which again, if that's your thing, that's your thing. However, you look But doesn't that also come with consequences? Well, all of these things come with consequences, but right. I'm saying you're looking for something that helps to support you and not to isolate you. Okay. And if you see something that supports and encourages you, 
That's what you grab. I can't tell you which one to. But the same. But I mean, so is there is there no distinction between what is um, what should be encouraged versus what should not? Because I mean, people have perspectives, right? And we mm -hmm. always see uh, these things pop up on social media where these groups are formed with sometimes men, mm -hmm. uh, men who have this ridiculously skewed perspective on mm -hmm. what society should be doing for them or what they should be contributing to society, and they get like-minded men to support them. It doesn't mean that it's and it's to be encouraged or positive. Well, the idea is where is the majority and where is the minority? Mm. Now, if you look now and you look at those type of things, those things are still are getting to be in the minority, whereas that was in the majority. Okay. Like I said, there is a lot of good progression, and I want to highlight that, especially today, yeah. where men are more open to the conversation. A lot of people ask me, now, hey, what's your feedback like with the yeah. project? What's your feedback like when you're having conversations? I'm like, it's good. It's good, especially in a place where culturally we have this idea and you're hearing more people asking questions. You know, more people are saying, hey, listen, I dealt with this. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at, we're third in terms of in the Caribbean speaking countries in terms of suicide for mm -hmm. men. Um, those things have to change, but those conversations have to happen. Yesterday, I had some stuff in town where they were talking to young men. And we always talk about the future, and the men are, and, the young, and you know, the young people are our future. We have to start where we need to start, which mm -hmm. is we have to get more to the young men and kind of get them there. But we're not going to exclude the older men because the older men have experience. So it's back to the mentorship, back mm -hmm. to the coaches, back to those people in the community who play a pivotal part in what your future looks like as a young person. But isn't there the challenge of the older men thinking uh, of the old way in terms of yeah, yeah. How, how, what the, that, that archetype of what a man's supposed to be? Yeah, and, and you will find that. And mm -hmm. this is why we say, okay, let's channel, not that, but let's see what experience they have had. Because a lot of things, uh, you have cycles that happen all the time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you're the provider, and again, at that time, you're the provider, and you just come in with this mindset. Yeah. Now, if that mindset doesn't change, which I understand, you still want to be able to learn from certain things that they've been through. How, how often have you talked to a man in the community, an older man, or growing up, talked to this older man, and mm -hmm. he give you good advice? Yeah, oftentimes. Where are those men? They're still there, no? They're still there. I but still get advice today. I get advice too. <laughs> but what we have to look at is that we have to amplify that voice. Right. Because the voice that we've had amplified in a couple of years or past years have always been the, well, I'm strong, beat my chest, grunt. The toxic, type of toxic masculinity. And beat your chest, grunt. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, well, hey, listen, if I create a space for you, are you open to better communication? And what voice do you want to amplify? You want to amplify a negative voice or you want to apply something you've learned along the way? And for those who might consider that to be a soft man? This is what we have to do. We have to change the narrative. Vulnerability is not weakness. Vulnerability is to take a certain type of strength for you to dig deeper and pass the mask of being a man to share how you feel about something. However, the other side of it is we have to have people that receive that. Mm. Right? Half of the men that you know or we might talk to have been told that they are not a real man. Yeah, they you had a man up. Things. You, you had, had a man, man up. up what you're crying for. Right. So when you look at that, that's the receiving end. Right. So if I come to you and I say something, I say, brother, get over that tomorrow. You'll do that tomorrow. Am I helping you or hurting you? Not neither. You're not doing anything. <laughs> anything. Just exactly. Stop. Yeah. So I still remain in the same place. So the idea is that we need to support each other and we need to be supported as well. Yeah. I've, I've seen that a lot of men tend to not rally around men, which mm. is weird because then on the opposite side, we have a lot of women that rally around women. Yeah. I mean, it's not always, always authentic for some <laughs> of them, right? Let's just say that. <laughs> However, you find a lot of men are not in that solidarity with men, I think, and that is a positive issue as well. Like, you and I have a good conversation here, mm -hmm. and when we leave here, the conversation is done. We rally around the football team, and then after tomorrow, we forget who we talk to in the stadium. Yeah. We have to be able to, to create more solidarity from men with men, because the same way how hurt men hurt men, mm -hmm. heal men heal men. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. But I guess in, in, in my experience, what it's been is that even in that situation that you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. my go, my go and watch a football match or we bounce up in the stadium. Mm -hmm. But then if it's consistent, then over time, men tend to build a relationship like that. And it might not take us off the off the um, football field, you know. Yeah, but yeah. every time we come, we definitely know that we we here together and we with each other. And I mean, does that does that is there any value in that? There's lots of value in that, but you have to think about how is that like in terms of now we're trying to shift it from minorities to majority, right? right. Those groups exist. I have my group. You'll have your group of people that you talk to and you associate with, maybe not on a constant basis, maybe mm -hmm. irregularly. But we're trying to create the solidarity between men and more support groups for men because there are things that, that we have to take. And I always say this, man, I'm surrounded by women in my house. 
Me so too. I, I understand. I take a lot from them. My sister was the one that got me the journaling, mm -hmm. and that's helped me for the past couple years. I've released books because of that. Right. I feel as though we need to take a page out of their books. There's a lot more support system for women, and we realize how much it helps them. Men do not outlive women, right? The majority of men mm -hmm. die before the women that they have in their life. So we have to also take, and that's what I said, it's not a man versus woman. We have to take pages out of their book. Of course. Right? And we have to understand, hey, what works for you? Because now you, you might say something, and I might say we're Trinidad, you know, we're Tobagonian, or we're Grenadian, or Bajan. But we're all global citizens. Yeah. So we all have the same type of responsibility for each other. So that's why I said there's so much areas that we could touch on. But like a day like today, it's, yes, it's the value and appreciate men. But you also have to appreciate people who love them and support them. Yeah, most definitely. Well, Garth, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. I appreciate and it. And I want you to do me one favor before you leave. Just look into that camera mm -hmm. and give the men of Trinidad and Tobago whatever message you want to give them for International Men's Day today. So my message for Trinidad and Tobago and for the men of Trinidad and Tobago, first of all, I want to give everybody their flowers. I think a lot of times we only give people a recognition at the end of the journey when they no longer can hear or see it. Secondly, I want to tell the men of Trinidad and Tobago and Caribbean men that we love you. Um, I think a lot of times when you say that it comes from this vulnerability type of standpoint or a weak standpoint, I will tell you here as a, a man that, that we do love you and we do appreciate you. So today should not be the only day, but because it is a day that we cut it off for International Men's Day, I personally want to send a message out to the men of Trinidad and Tobago that we do love you. Gott Vosen, ladies and gentlemen, the founder of the Dear Men Project, chatting with us this morning as we celebrate International Men's Day. Let's take a quick break and we come back with more on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.